Join me as I breathe new life into an old $8 garage sale nightstand. With just a touch of paint, some clay, creative molds, and rub-on transfers, I'll transform this piece into a thing of beauty. Hello my sweets, it's Keisha. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and thank you for choosing to watch my video. Get ready for a DIY journey filled with inspiration and a touch of ingenuity. After vacuuming the nightstand, I removed the drawer pulls and gave it a thorough cleaning with Dawn Power Wash and a microfiber cloth. Then I rinsed with clean water and left it to dry. I used wood filler to fill in any minor nicks and dents. Next I took it outside and stripped the top with citrus strip and a scraper. Then used after wash and fine steel wool to remove any residual stripper and paint. I cut a quarter inch piece of plywood to fit in place of the top drawer and sanded everything. What I have here are two molds. Uh, one I've used previously in a previous video where I um, upcycled some pots or vessels. And uh, it's the Toadstool by IOD. So I'm going to be using a couple of the mushrooms from here. And this is a newer one that I have from, looks like Zuri. Um, I got both of these on Etsy. And uh, this one is called Fairyland Mushrooms, and it's an Enchanted Realm collection. So there's um, actually uh, quite a few more of these types of molds, but I just uh, chose this one. Um, and I'm going to be using these to put on the bottom drawer front um, of the nightstand that I'm working on. So I'm going to start with this one here. And as usual, you'll need, uh, well, I'll need cornstarch and my clay, which is the Das air dry clay. And I also have a cereal box. And the reason why I'm doing using this is because it has that um, film over the cardboard. So when I place it on here, the cardboard will automatically suck up all the moisture from the clay before I can get it over to the drawer front. So the same steps as always. We get out a chunk of our molds and I'm going to condition it so you just want to kind of knead it around a little bit and I'm going to take some of my cornstarch here and dust it over the mold this acts as a release agent to help the clay come out of it just going to Start sticking this. I'm just going to take the mold and set it down on here. And then you just want to slowly ease it back. But this is what it's looking like. Which I think that is so cute. Okay, so I just need one of these for this project. And I'm just going to do a couple of of these. Now they kind of aren't the same size obviously so I'm gonna um, just choose a couple of the smaller ones. I'm not gonna make you watch the whole thing of me doing this one also so I'm gonna meet you back here when I get to the next step. Okay so I have my designs here and I did cover them with a damp towel while I got everything set up and this is a drawer that I want to place these clay pieces onto so I also have my tight bond uh, quick and thick glue it's a multi-surface glue a paintbrush to spread the glue and some water and an, and an additional paintbrush to um, clean up any squeeze out 
that I may have. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to get this off of here in one piece. I think I'm going to go ahead and touch the cereal box down so it's a little bit more manageable for me. And I'm going to turn it out to my hand. And now, my glue here and I'm just going to spread it on the back and you want to be sure to get all the way to the edges And you don't want the glue to be too thick because you don't want to have a lot of squeeze out. I kind of want it in this area here. So I am going to do the best I can to get this flipped back over. <clears throat> Okay, there's no way to do it but to do it, right? I'm going to turn it to the side here. And now I'm going to position it a little bit better. And as you can see, I am smearing the glue everywhere, but that's okay because it does dry clear. And I have my water and paintbrush here to help me with some of the cleanup. All right. So with this, I just have a have the paper towel from earlier and I'm just going to come around and clean up that glue. First. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and apply these as well, these three. And I want to do them over here on this side. Just going to clean up the little bit of squeeze out that I have over here and then I'm going to set this drawer aside to let this clay dry. I've already painted or prepped the inside of, of this with a Dixie Belle Boss. It, it blocks odors, stains, and stops bleed through um, and really I was looking to stop the odors. Um, this piece did have a little bit of an odor to it once I started washing the wood initially so I went ahead and sealed the, the inside of it and also the inside and outside of the drawers just not the drawer fronts. Um, so now what I have here is a color that I mixed which is a mixture of hazelnut, cashew, and ivory. Uh, it's equal parts and I'm gonna start getting this painted. I do have the piece upside down to begin with so go ahead and get started. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to let this sit for a little bit until I can handle it to flip it back on its legs. And um, I'll come back to you when it's time for that. I was so excited to start painting earlier that I completely forgot that I needed to tape off some, er some areas. So I do have some blue tape here. And the piece is now flipped right side up. And now I'm going to uh, finish doing 
the first coat. Um, I did paint the upper part here because um, I did cut the shelf that I want to put in this area, but it hasn't. I haven't put it in here yet because I figured it would be a little bit easier to paint if um, that wasn't in here yet. So uh, that's part of the reason why the tape is all around here so that it's uh, hopefully going to be wood on wood um, when I go to glue it in. Okay, so I have the nightstand here and I'm going to be working on the top next. I have done um, two coats two and a half of the initial color and it is dried and I've taped off to do the top. Um, I'm not really filling all of the brush marks on here. So before I go to seal it, I'm going to see if I can't do a sand over it with some fine sandpaper to kind of smooth that out. But right now what I'm wanting to do is the top and I have this, um, Barcelona, this, uh, chalk paint in uh, Barcelona beige. And I watered it down, um, so it's a, what is it? 50% water, 50% paint, one-to-one. -one. And I also have a rag here, because what I'm gonna do is kind of use this as like a stain. So I'm going to, that's mixed up. I'm gonna run this across. The moment the paint hit the wood, I knew I wasn't going to like it. In fact, I hated it. So I removed it and started over. So I've completely had to pivot and change direction because what I was doing before was not it. So what I've done is I've done this water-based pre-stained wood conditioner on the top and Next, I'm going to try this home, uh, I'm sorry, folk art home decor wood tint in the color walnut. And I did get this from Amazon and I'll have it linked below. And so this one says to apply it and then wait 30 seconds and wipe it back. So that's what I'm going to do. I guess I could have poured it into something else or use a smaller brush, but we're here now. So I'm going to apply it. All right. I'm going to go ahead and start wiping this off. This does not give a drying time, um, so I'm not sure how long I should wait. So I'm going to wait a couple of hours and see if I am enjoying this color. If not, I mean, I, I do like it. I just want it to be a little bit darker, so um, I think so. So I'm going to wait a couple of hours and then if I'm feeling like I want it to go a little darker, then I'll add another coat and see from there. So when that time comes back, I will be back. Next, I'm gonna work on this bottom drawer front. And um, so I have a red here and I put a drop of this bright green, red apple, excuse me. And I put a drop of this uh, bright green inside of it, just to mute that color down a little bit. And I am going to start with a little brush here. And I think I'm going to do these three with this red and then one over here on the side. I mean, you can't see it, but um, I'll move it over eventually. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and start painting. And I'm just going to do like a little time lapse. So that you're not here basically watching paint dry.
It's been a couple of days since I put this wood tint on here and I did end up doing a three coats and everything is fully dry, including the paint on the body and on the drawer fronts. And so now what I want to do is add some of these um, rub on transfers here that I have. Uh, this one is from Folk Art and does it say? It's called Ferns and Bugs. And um, there's three sheets in this one of different pieces of greenery and little bugs. And then I have two here from Redesign with Prima. Uh, and this one is called Botanical Snippets. And this one has three pages. And this is sort of what it looks like here. Um, and then I also have this one that's a maxi transfers that's called the Collector's Closet. And this one also has a couple of botanicals and some different uh, bugs on there. So what I'm going to do is go through and audition um, some of these to see where I would like to place them on the fronts of the drawers. I'll cut them out and then I will come back when it is time to apply them. I've gotten some of the transfers laid out like how I want them. Uh, I, I do plan to uh, layered these up. So um, what I'm going to do next is start transferring them on. Um, we have a variety of tools here. This one was um, a separate purchase. It's not necessary. Um, and the two redesigned by Prima molds, one came with a stick like this and then another just regular craft stick. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get started with these and I think what I'm going to do because I am this is my first time doing a transfer and as you can see there's a gap in between here so I do have them taped down but what I want to do is I'm going to cut this backing piece because it does have a, a white backing to it right here um, just in the area and then work it from there. I want it to kind of go down and up and then back so that there's no blank area in between the drawers. I think that's the easiest way to do it, but we'll see what this one right in the middle. <laughs> so I'm going to pull this up and I'm just going to cut right along here to get to this point. And you just want to be careful not to touch your transfer area because that is the sticky part that will help it adhere to your project. So I'm going to lay that back down and I'm just going to hand burnish that on. Make sure it's in position. And I'm going to go ahead and start burnishing this on. Again, this tool isn't, this tool here isn't a necessary purchase. Um, I just know that I, I do have problems with my hands um, so I'm hoping that because I'm going to be doing quite a bit of this <clears throat> that'll alleviate some of the pain that I'll have later on because I know it's coming <laughs> all right so what you want to do is yes we don't want to do that rub on this with some pressure and you'll soon see the color slightly change of the item. That means it is adhering. It's going kind of like a lighter color. You may not be able to pick it up, but I should be able to just lift, start lifting that where I've been burnishing it down at. So you just want to go over this slowly so you get all of your pieces. But if you, you know, happen to miss a part, uh, you just match it back up but if you go slowly like this and slowly lift it and check it as you go along um, you can see where you've you know hit the points to get it to stuck down stick down excuse me and where it's not stuck down and you could just drop it right back down and keep burnishing so I'm just going to continue on with this and I will fast forward for you while I get this done.
as you can see, I did cut off a little bit more of the transfer here. And so now what I want to do, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Now what I want to do is just bend this over the edge like this and just give that a crease and come this way and give it another crease. And then eventually I'm going to come back up here and give this a crease. So first I'm going to work on this part here, the first crease, and I may have to come in with one of these smaller tools. We'll see. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and come in with a smaller one and rub this out. And then I'm going to come back this way on this side. Get that stuck down. Just give it a check and see if the liner will release. And it does. And that's what the first one is looking like. And so what you want to do now is just take this side, the shiny side down, and just come over and burnish it just to make sure everything is stuck down. Now likely what I'm going to have to do to get down, when I get down to cutting these, uh, I'm sorry, being able to open up the drawers is what I'm going to do is take a blade and just slice uh, close to the bottoms so that um, they can open up seamlessly. But since I have, um, oops, I'm sorry, I'm going to go through it Since I have so many other ones that are going in the creases, I'm going to wait until the end to do that. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and just continue doing this and then when I get to the next level I'll check back in with you. I finished the first layer and I started to kind of lay out the second layer but I did want to talk about something before I moved on. These folk art um, transfers did not take kindly to being uh, manipulated over the edges of the drawers here um, unlike the redesigned one that went down super smoothly so I learned that not all transfers are created equal um, so in the future if I use these uh, transfers again it would be on a completely flat surface as I am not as experienced because this is my first time with doing transfers and um, that really messed up so I do have a big gap here um, I'm not too worried about what's going on in here where it uh, lifted and crinkled and you can see some of the transfer stuff got left behind on there. It's on my thumb. It's on the backing piece. So um, yeah, if I'm going to continue with these on this project and in the future, it's only going to be in the flat areas. No dips or going around edges or anything like that. So um, in, I'm going to start to try to camouflage this and I'm going to start by putting this piece right here and this is a um, redesigned by Prima. This one came off of the redesigned by Prima um, transfers. So I'm going to put that one there and I'm just going to take this away. And I wanted to have this one somewhere in here. Then I have this one here. So now with this one, what I'm going to do is get fancy again for my first time. 
and <laughs> I'm just gonna take my thumb now and just crease this right around this mushroom here I'm just pressing it in so I can get a good cut line And I'm just going to raise it up here. Oops. And I can see where my crease is, so I'm just going to come along that crease. Something like that. And I'm going to save that little bit in case I want to try to... And you can see that goes right, right in there, so it kind of looks like it's... It's in front of this one, but it's behind this one. And then I have this one here on the side. And if I... What I do? Oh, I lost my piece of tape. I'm just going to grip that one to right there. So now I'm going to go about the same process, peeling off the backs and rubbing them down. I am on to my next level here. So these four are going to be going down next. Uh, this one is off to the side. I actually want it to come this way, but I need this one to go down first. So that's why that's off to the side. And then with this one, it's coming up over the mushroom here. So what I want to do is um, like what I did earlier with this one here is take my thumbnail I'm going to come around this way because the thumbnail is essentially gone. And I'm just going to follow this around. And then, you know, what I'll do is I'll do this in two cuts. So I'll cut this portion first. So that's going to go in there like that. And then this one here is going to go around the edge and come in here to hide some of this mess. And this is one of the redesign with Prima transfers. So I finished putting on all of the transfers on the front of the nightstand here. Um, I did add a couple of uh, mushrooms down here. And I also went in and with little bits and pieces uh, to fill in some of the blank space to make them. The molds kind of look like they're not just floating in here. And I'm pretty happy with how that has come out. I also put a little dragonfly and another little uh, beetle here. And I also have this one that I want to put on the top uh, right hand front corner, kind of at an angle. And um, but I'm going to wait since I already have it on its back. I'm going to pull out the drawers and I'm actually going to start um, sealing this with the Annie Sloan clear wax. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to do that. And then once I get the front areas um, and the sides, I'm going to flip it onto its bottom here and um, do the top. So I'll be back. I've coated the whole nightstand um, in a coat of the clear wax from, from Granny Sloan and let that sit overnight. And now I just put another coat on and just lightly wiped it back of the clear. And what I want to do now is come in with the dark, dark uh, Annie Sloan uh, chalk paint wax and um, take down the color of these um, mushrooms a little bit. I feel like they are um, pretty bright and also to give it some more depth and dimension. So um, what I have here is a smaller brush um, to help me get into some of these crevices here. Um, and then I do have a couple of other sizes of brushes to the side. So I will be 
utilizing those. Now this is my first time using this product, so I am a little nervous, but here we go. So I'm just taking a small amount of this and I wanna come in and, and put some down in the bare patches here. And also over the mushrooms and around the edges. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there and I'm gonna come back in with this brush and just kind of blend it in. And using the clear beforehand just kind of helps to um, not that let the dark be so intense. Okay, so that's what it's looking like so far. So I'm gonna continue on doing this until I get this whole thing completed here. I will probably change out this brush though because I'm finding that the, um, I feel like the bristles are a little bit too stiff on it. So I'm gonna, um, I have another one here. I don't know if it'll get down into the crevices, but I have this brush here, which is typically used as a stenciling brush, but I'm using it for this application. <laughs> and this is actually muting down these colors beautifully. So again, I'm just gonna continue on until this whole thing is completed. Okay, so I'm pretty satisfied with the way this is going so far. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this off. What I'm gonna do is um, wait a couple of hours for the dark wax to set up, and then I'm gonna come back through with the clear wax to seal the dark wax in. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the sides and the upper piece that you can't see that's off camera here. So I will be back with you when that is complete. All of the waxing is done, and since I had to edit out and speed up tons of footage, I decided to give you a quick tour of the nightstand. I drilled a hole in the back for cords so my son will be able to charge his tablets on the shelf. I painted the inside of the drawers as they were a mess. I also ombre the sides of the drawers for a pop of color. Overall, I am extremely happy with how this nightstand turned out, and I think Pop's going to love it. Some of you may have noticed the drawer pulls, or lack thereof. Those are coming. Stay tuned for the next video as I dive into the wonderful world of resin. As I conclude this video, remember that beauty can be found in the most unexpected places. If you enjoyed watching me turn this $8 garage sale find into a stunning masterpiece, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more creative DIYs. And let's continue to find joy in the art of repurposing together. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, love, inspire, create. Love you, bye!